Let's get into the story of Janae Dubois, who played the beautiful, sassy Walona Woods on Good Times, right? Now, Janae Dubois was born on August 5th, 1932 in either Brooklyn, New York, and some of my research says she was from Philadelphia, so I don't know. Even her birth year is in question because some of some say she was either born in 1932, 1938, or 1945. So I don't know because nobody really knows her real age. According to Bernadette Stannis, who played Thelma, she said uh, she said Janae always kept that a secret for some reason. She kept her age a secret. And here's something else that's controversial too, right? Now, they say her father's name is Gordon Adelbert Dubois, but on her death certificate, they say legendary swing era jazz icon Cab Calloway was a biological father. Hmm. I don't know. But anyway now, right? Now, Janae, she says she used to help her mom scrub floors when she was young, and she promised her when she make it big one day, she would take care of her. Now, her acting career started in the 1960s in a play called The Long Dream. And she was also in the early movie version, not the play, A Raisin in the Sun with Louis Gossett Jr. She also was in the play called Golden Boy with Sammy Davis Jr., Billy Daniels, Lola Falana, and Johnny Brown, who later on played Bookman on the show Good Times with her. They've been knowing each other for a long time. Now, after that, right, she made history. She made history as the first black woman on a CBS regular in daytime when she landed the role of Loretta Allen on a soap opera called Love of Life. Wow, that's crazy. She was the first African-American female regular cast member on a daytime series. That's crazy. Now, in 1973, she landed the role of Stormy Monday in the comedy Five on the Black Hand Side with Clarice Taylor, who y'all probably know as Bill Cosby's mother, Anna Huxtable on The Cosby Show. And Glenn Turman was also in that movie too. After that, while still performing in stage plays, she ended up catching the eye of producer Norman Lear, who was sitting in the audience at one of her plays and after seeing how good she was he wanted her to play the character Walona Woods who was the family neighbor for the show Good Times and she took the opportunity and she became one of the fans favorites on the show appearing in 133 episodes you know her look man sexy look her style style of fashion she changed the game because look she made her own clothes and everything and when James Amos and Esther Rose left the show over disagreements with the writing, Norman Lear had her appear in more episodes for the fifth season. She got more time. And they also gave her a foster daughter named Penny Gordon, played by 10-year-old Janet Jackson at the time. You know, that child, that child abuse episode, that was a classic, man, because it goes on in the hood. You know, when she burned her with the hot iron and... He had a broken arm and all that. It was crazy. Now, here's the crazy part though, right? Now, Jimmy Walker, JJ, <laughs> JJ Evans said he had some issues with uh, Janae too. He said she frequently complained that her character wasn't getting enough lines. And she was always trying. She was always pushing. And he believes her complaints eventually led to the writers adding Janet Jackson's character Penny to the show. He said without Janae, he doesn't think Janet Jackson would have ever gotten on the show because she laid out her side of whatever so much that the writers said, we got to do something to get her off our backs. <laughs> wow. And he basically, look, Jimmy Walker, he basically said that uh, all his castmates, all his former castmates didn't appreciate being on a successful show, which ultimately led to the series Cancellation. Wow. 
I don't know, but JJ been having a lot to say about the thing, man. What y'all think? Y'all think they was hating on JJ, man, because he was the star of the show? I don't know, man. But anyway, look. So, Norman Lear. Now, Norman Lear also had Janae sing the theme song for the Jeffersons, too, called Moving On Up. Now, how that came about was she had asked Norman Lear if he needed some other work done because... She was trying to make some extra money. She had kids at the house. And he asked her if she could write a song for his new show called The Jeffersons. And she wrote it. And the rest is history. Everybody knows that song now. And by her doing that song, it helped. It later on helped launch her singing career too. Now, by the time the 1980s hit, she created the Janae Dubois Academy of Theater Arts and Sciences, which was a performing arts school for teenagers in Long Island, New York. And like I said, after she did the Moving On Up song, she started releasing albums too. She released an album called Queen of the Highway in 1980. And she did another album called, again, Janae Dubois in 1983. Plus, she did some background singing on Rick James' classic album, Street Songs. Now, in 1987, she played Janet Jackson's mother in her video, Control. But, that same year, her 36-year-old son died after a three-year battle with cancer. In 1988, she was in one of my favorite movies of all time, man. I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. <laughs> With Keenan Ivory Wayans as his mother. That's my movie right there, man. That's a classic still to this day. Now, in 1992, her, Danny Glover, and Ayuko Babu co-founded the Pan-African Film and Arts Festival in Los Angeles. And you know, some label that the largest black film festival in the United States. In 1995, she won a Cable Ace Award for Best Supporting Actress for her role in the Lifetime movie called Other Women's Children. And comedian Chris Rock also won an award too. He won one for his uh, HBO stand-up comedy special right alongside her. And she also won an NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series for her work on a show called Touched by an Angel. I don't know if y'all remember that show, Touched by an Angel. She was on the Wayans Brothers. Oh, man. She played the grandma on the Wayans Brothers, which is one of my favorite shows. And one thing I didn't know, she was the voice of Miss Avery on the PJs. I love the PJs. I just I just watched that not too long ago on Tubi. And she won an Emmy, too. She won some Emmys for her work on the PJs also. Now, in 2003... Drew Barrymore requested and cast her in Charlie's Angels for a throttle with Bernie Mac. In 2006, TV Land recognized the cast of Good Times at the TV Land Awards with the Impact Award. In 2007, she released her third album titled Hidden Treasures. But on February 17, 2020, Janae Dubois died of cardiac arrest in her sleep at her house now i know in the interview she did mention that she was working on a book but i don't know if she ever had finished it or it might be released i don't i didn't see it online or nothing but she was working on a book and you know after her passing bernadette stannis who played thelma on good times right she said janae appeared to be in good health when they had appeared two weeks ago right at a signing event you know but and she also stated that Janae's birthday was something that she kept to herself so nobody really knows how old she was and you know the reports the reports say she was 74 years old rest in peace to Janae Dubois now, let's get into the story of Esther Rowe, who played Florida Evans on the show Good Times. Now, Esther Rowe was born November 8, 1920 in Pompano Beach, Florida. 
Now, she was the 10th born out of 18 children from her parents who were Bohemian immigrants who moved to Florida after they got married. And her father, he was a farmer. He grew vegetables. But he was also a very good storyteller. He was good at telling stories, which inspired all his kids to form their own drama troupe. And the family used to perform skits and songs for church groups all around Florida, calling themselves the Family Circle. But at that time, Esther was just too young to join. Now, after graduating high school, she went to Spelman College in Atlanta her freshman year because she wanted to be a journalist. Then she moved to Harlem, New York with her sister because some of her sisters was into acting also. And when she landed in New York, she went to a couple other colleges out there. And then she went to Yale University. Wow, she went to Yale. Now, after that, she had got into African dancing. And she later on became the principal dancer. Esther said... She didn't know why a lot of black people didn't want to see African dance culture on stage during that time. She said everybody would rather see the jitterbug instead of the African dance. She was she was into her African culture at that time. She also said uh, people used to make fun of her because she had an afro before it was cool to have one. And they used to make fun of her saying she forgot to straighten her hair today. But she didn't care. She loved the African culture. She can care less. Now, she also joined the Negro Ensemble Company, in which she was really one of the founding members of that company, and got into stage play acting at that time. Now, her first stage play was in 1962. It was a play called The Blacks as Felicity. And then she appeared in the plays The Crucible, The Amen Corner, Blues for Mr. Charlie, and many more. But the play that really changed her life was a play called Don't Play Us Cheat by Melvin Van Peebles. And she played a role as Miss Maybell, making like she was making like $140 a week at that time. But see, at that particular play, Norman Lear, the casting director from Tannen Productions, was in the audience once again, watching her perform and after the play, he asked her to audition for a show called Maude he was doing with B. Arthur. Now, at first, she refused and she told him no. But Norman Lear somehow convinced her and that's when she told him she'll do the show only if it's not the stereotypical black maid and she had some input on the character. And in 1972, she landed the role of Florida Evans on the show Maude as a sassy maid housekeeper. Now, the show was so good, right? And the impact she made on the show was so powerful. Norman Lear decided to do a spinoff show for her called Good Times, which was created by Eric Monty, who created the movie Cooley High, and Mike Evans, who played the original Lionel on the Jeffersons. But before she took the job right, she told them that she wanted to be able to have some control on the writing of the show and she wanted to bring a more uplifting view to the black family plus black pride. Plus, she demanded she have a husband for her kids or she wouldn't do the show. That was the only problem. When she first read the script, for some reason they didn't want a black father figure raising kids. And raising his kids on TV. What is that, man? What's the problem with showing that on TV during that time? Even Eric Monty said the same thing. When he presented the story to uh, Norman Lear and all of them, they told him it's a great script, but you got to get rid of the father for some reason. And look, Esther, Esther said she had to fight hard to have a husband on the show because they didn't want to give her a husband for her kids. They did not want a strong black father figure on TV at that time. It's crazy, man. Wow. And that's when they cast John Amos as the father because he played her husband, Henry, on Maude. And after that, in 1974, Good Times was born. 
she played a mother, Florida Evans, which became one of the highest rated shows on TV. You know, good times changed the game. But the crazy part is the biggest audience were white people. They loved it too. Hmm, that's crazy. But anyway, look, right? Her character, Florida Evans, was so good. She was nominated for a Golden Glove Award for Best Actress on a Television Series, Musical, or Comedy. The following year, she released an album titled The Garden of My Mind that had a bunch of music on there and a lot of poems on there. Now, as the show Good Times continued to skyrocket, right? The show started to get some backlash from the black community. Even John Amos and Esther Rowe, they started to feel like the show was getting corny with some of the writing. And the whole direction of the show was just going somewhere else. Because you got to remember, these two people, John Amos and Esther Rowe, loved their black culture. And you already know John Amos, he, he came from Roots. He came from Roots. Because look, they had white writers on the show. They was writing stuff for Thelma about having sex at a young age. And Esther was not having that at all because she was treated, she treated Thelma like her daughter for real. She ain't want none of that. They were overprotective of Thelma. Especially when it came to JJ, played by Jimmy Walker. Now the writers, they started to focus more on him being silly instead of the other kids who were very smart and intelligent on the show. Michael was intelligent and Thelma was intelligent. But you know, I gotta say, man, JJ did bring the funny and the comedy side to the show, though. The dynamite thing was cool. It was cool. You know, he answered the phone like cello. <laughs> He was funny. He brought the funny side to the show, but John Amos felt they were making him look stupid. Because look, John Amos went off on Jimmy Walker one day too because look, Jimmy Walker suggested that Bernadette Standis, playing, who played Thelma, to do a photo shoot poster like Farrah Fawcett did because the poster sold over 3 million copies. Jimmy Walker said he was just trying to get her to use her beauty, you know, her sexiness to her advantage because he knew her background. She, you know, Bernadette, she she was in the uh, Miss Black American pageant. She won Miss Brooklyn. She was first runner up in the Miss New York State pageant and all that. But when John Amos heard about what Jimmy Walker did, he approached him and he told him, don't he ever put her in a position like that again. Wow, because at the time, Thelma was the hottest thing on TV, too. And she was representing all the young black women at that time. And, you know, John and Esther, they used to express their frustrations to the staff. And it got to the point that they were scared of John Amos. They claimed he was hard to work with. That's what they say. And they ended up firing him after the third season. You know, Jimmy Walker said, John Amos caused problems on the set because he thought the show was beneath him. Wow. So, you know, they got their wishes, man. They got rid of the black father. You know, I always thought uh, it was wrong how they killed James Evans off the show. A car accident? And he had just got a good paying job to move his family out of the ghetto. Wow. That's crazy, man. That might have been the first death on a sitcom I don't know it felt real though used to watch it, it felt real but anyway by the fifth season right now Esther had had enough she couldn't take it anymore and she ended up quitting the show due to the silly writing and scripts of the show the way they took her off too was kind of crazy too because they made it look like she just left the kids to go live with her boyfriend in Arizona. And now JJ and Walona had to take care of the family. Y'all remember that? And you know what's crazy? According to Jimmy Walker, he said off camera, him and Esther Rowe never said one word to each other. And he said the same thing about John Amos. The whole time through all the season of Good Time, they never said a word to each other. Wow. 
That's crazy, man. But you know, Esther Rowe did return for the final and last season of the show. And you know, they made it all like a, a happy ending where they finally got out of the ghetto. When Keith got that big football contract and Thelma was pregnant and everything. And you know, but Esther said uh, she really came back so all the black actors wouldn't lose their jobs and be broke. Because they was going to cancel the show before that. So she just, she said she didn't want to see so many of the black actors out of a job. Now, after Good Times was over, right? In 1979, she won the Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Limited Series or Special for a TV movie called Summer of My German Soldier. In 1983, she was given the AFT Human Rights Awards, which stood for American Federation of Teachers. In 1986, she put out a toy line of black dolls called Charlie and Annie Rags for black children. In 1989, she played in a movie called The Mighty Quinn with Denzel Washington, Cheryl Lee Ralph, and Robert Townsend. I haven't seen that movie in a long time either. That was a good movie too. That same year, she was in the movie A Raisin in the Sun with Danny Glover and Helen Martin, who was one of her cast members on Good Times. She played Weeping Wanda. She was also in uh, the movie Driving Miss Daisy, too. Now, in 1990, she became the first woman to win the NAACP Chairman's Civil Rights Leadership Award. But that same year, she had got into a real bad car accident which left her seriously injured with like a lot of broken ribs, arms, and everything. They say the orbit in her left eye was damaged and the driver of the other car that they ended up hitting, they died. It was a fatal car accident. Now, in 1991, she was inducted into the Black Filmmakers Hall of Fame. In 1997, she played Aunt Sarah in the movie Rosewood, which was a great movie. She did a good job in that movie. But on November 17th, 1998, Esther Rowe died from complications of diabetes. And they say, you know, in the last couple months, she was on kidney dialysis. You know, after her passing, her family donated over 100 items of hers to the African American Research Library and Cultural Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And she never had any kids of her own, but she did treat Bernadette Standis, who played Thelma Evans, like she was her real daughter. And she used to call her mom and take her to a doctor visits and everything. That's beautiful right there, though. That's beautiful. I'm glad that they shared that bond together. She was 78 years old. Rest in peace, Esther Rowe.